save your money save your money save your money hey guys what's up welcome to my channel my name is Raven for those of you who do not know or didn't watch my intro video um, today I'm going to be talking about getting into CRNA school CRNA stands for Certified Registered Nurse Anesthetist and I will be enrolling in CRNA school in the fall. Let me tell you, it was a process in order to get to where I am now, even though I'm not anywhere near being done. But just applying and getting interviews and being accepted to the program is a process and anybody who has went through that process I will understand. And for those of you who might be thinking about going through that process, I want to make that process as easy as possible for you because honestly, like. I was stressed during that process. So I wanted to just give like a quick five or six tips that will help you when you're in your application process if you're thinking about going to CRNA school. So the first one is definitely, definitely number one is save your money. Not only is school in general expensive, but applications are expensive. I mean, I applied to seven schools. I probably did too much, but I knew that. I didn't care what happened. I needed to go to CRNA school in 2019 so I was like I have seven choices seven chances I need to make it happen but I will say that I had to save a lot of money in order to make sure I had enough money to apply to schools some schools applications are as much as a hundred hundred and fifteen dollars that's the most I think I've saw some are free but most of the time you're gonna at least pay about thirty to fifty seventy a hundred dollars so it just depends on the school and what they're cost is so I would definitely say save your money not only that if you get an interview in a school and you're applying to schools across the country like I did then you're definitely gonna want to save your money because plane tickets are not cheap hotels are not cheap you know what I'm saying like rental cars are not cheap everything starts to add up so you want to be really prepared when you're thinking about applying to school because you don't want to run into the problem of all right I got this interview but I can't even afford to even get to it or I have this school I want to apply to and the deadline is this, but I don't have enough money to pay for that. So definitely budget your money. The second thing would be definitely get an ICU job. I mean, you have to work in the ICU for at least one year in order to be accepted into CRNA school. Some schools say that they want you to have one year before application or at the time of application, and some schools say they want you to have one year by the time that you enroll in the program so you can apply after about six months of working in the ICU. But either way, however you do it, just make sure you look at the schools that you want to go to and what their requirements are. Some schools want two to three years, so it's really up to the school, but the minimum is definitely one year. So you have to have that one year in an ICU. Um, it could be medical, it could be surgical, CV ICU, burn ICU. Some schools take pediatric ICU, but not all schools do. And some people will have their preferences on what they say that is the best ICU, but I know people that have gone to CRNA school from all the ICUs, whether it be neuro ICU, pediatric ICU, um, CV ICU, medical ICU, surgical ICU, etc. So um, I wouldn't worry too much about the ICU that you go into as long as you make sure that it's one that you can learn a lot from, that they have a high volume, that they're seeing a lot of different patients preferably in a place where you know they, they get a lot of patients where it's a big ICU not a small one you want like 20 beds or more and you want to be able to have the access to see all the different things all the different drips all the different medication that they use um, the lines watch procedures go on watch patients get intubated sedate patients you know do all the things that you would have to do as a CRNA the third most, most important thing that I would say is to take the GRE. And if you know you want to go to CRNA school, you should take the GRE as soon as possible. I'm talking about like when you're finished with nursing school. Because I waited to the last minute to take my GRE right before applications were due. And I had to study for a month and really, really study because the GRE is very hard. It's no joke. It's like taking over those math courses that nobody really ever th will use again in life in high school and all these reading comprehension which wasn't that bad but the words and fill in the blanks and knowing what words meant that part was hard I'm not even gonna lie to you like and I was an A student in high school and in college like I was smart I am smart but 
I just felt like the GRE was definitely meant to trick you and to challenge you. And so I would say definitely take the GRE as soon as you can so you'll be less stressed and not rushing like I did. I used the app Magoosh and Magoosh really, really helped me. I'll put the link below for everyone if they want to look at the website and see if that will be something that would be work out for you. Um, it's a little expensive, but at the same time, like if you want to get that 150 in each category or above, which is what most schools want, then I definitely would say go ahead for it because they actually like have a really, really, really high success rate. And I feel like other programs may not have that, but Magoosh for sure has that. And you can have it and use it for like, I think the most like six months or so. But definitely check that website out and definitely study for the GRE because don't think you can just take it and just ace it without even looking at any GRE books. Trust me when I say that the GRE is difficult, but it's definitely something that a lot of schools want. And so you want to have that so you can be more marketable depending on the schools that you apply to. Maybe they not they not may not all want them, but you want to be more marketable and be able to apply to as many schools as you can. And that's it's raining, y'all. I got to go inside. My bad guys, so it started pouring raining when I was outside just now. I don't know if you could tell, but we're gonna finish the rest of this video inside. Let's continue. So the third tip that I have is to take the CCRN. Now, some schools, they do not want the CCRN. They don't require it, it says optional, but let me tell you something, everyone's taking the CCRN. CRNA school is super competitive. Most schools only accept a, from as little as 10 to maybe 20 students. I know some schools accept more, maybe up to 30 students, but either way, these schools are getting like 200 plus applicants every year. So you wanna be competitive. You wanna make sure that your application stands out. And taking a CCRN is something that can definitely do that. I mean, it's nice to say that you're a certified critical care registered nurse, you know? It just gives you a little pizzazz at the end of your name. So just take the test. It's actually not as bad as the, C as the GRE because it's stuff that's relevant to you, relevant to your practice. And so it makes it better and easier to study for because it's actually stuff that you actually will retain and remember and feel like relates to you. So I would say get a CCRN book. I used Barron's CCRN book to study as well as past CCRN. They have a lot of great questions on past CCRN's website, but I felt like Barron's book specifically broke down each topic um, very concisely and it took me like about a month to study for the CCRN using their book and then using the questions on past CCRN's website. And I passed that test with flying colors and I only studied for a month. And I was consistent though. I studied every day. I did at least, you know, maybe 20, 25 questions every day. And the questions that I didn't know or that I got wrong, I would go look into the Baron's book and see why I got them wrong. But first, before I started doing too many questions, I actually went through each and every page of the Baron's book in each system and really understood what would be on the test and what I needed to know. So I would definitely say just take the CCRN. Don't even hesitate to take it because like I said, for the GRE, if you don't, you're limiting your options as far as going to CRNA school. and to be honest, there's not many options in the grand scheme of things. So you want to make sure you're like you're really competitive as an applicant. Number five would be to alert your recommenders ahead of time. So all the applications that I did, they all wanted a recommendation letter or they wanted a recommender to actually go on a website and fill out like a survey about you where they rate you in different categories from like one to five. So you want to definitely let your recommenders know ahead of time. You don't want to wait to the last minute because, of course, everyone has their own life. They have their own, you know, responsibilities and priorities. And you don't want to wait to the last minute and be depending on someone to finish your application. You want to make sure that you let them know ahead of time. So they have, as even if it's as much as a month or two months ahead of time, so that they have the time to fill out that paperwork. It might not seem like a big task to you, but to some people, that's something that they have to do and take out time of their day to do. And so you wanna make sure that when they actually get the notification that, that you want them to be a recommender, that it's really ahead of time so that you don't feel like you're waiting on them to finish your application or are they gonna make the deadline? Because trust me, I've had it happen, not me, but I've saw it happen with one of my friends where 
their application was denied because they recommended it and put in the recommendation letter. And so you don't want that to happen to you. It's stupid. It doesn't even have to happen as long as you take the responsibility to let your recommenders know ahead of time that they either need to go on this website, they're going to get a link in the email, or that they need to actually mail a physical copy of a letter. Whatever it is, figure it out for each school that you want to apply to and get it done. Um, I think most schools ask for three recommenders, so you want to have three people that you can rely on to give you a recommendation letter, a good recommendation letter. Don't go to someone who you're not sure really likes you. You want to go to someone who you know really likes you and that will only speak highly of you because you don't want someone that's not too happy about you going to CRNA school to write you a recommendation letter and then it's not so great. I think that will definitely affect your application. So that is the last tip. For a bonus, I would say, again, save your money because aside from the applications, school is expensive. Most likely you cannot work while you're in CRNA school. And if you do, it's definitely not going to be as much as you did while you were not in school. So you want to make sure that you save as much as you can. If you're like me and you want to go across the country, that's a whole nother expense because you have to do moving costs, transport your car, buy new things for your new apartment. It becomes very expensive. It adds up quickly. So you want to make sure that you definitely just save your money. And I'm going to make a video about the actual interview process next because that's something that a lot of people also ask me about. But I'll make a separate video for that. So if you have any questions, comment below, subscribe to my channel, share this with your friends and people that you know that want to become CRNAs or interested in it. And thank you for watching, guys.